Hey everybody, this is Sheriff Tim Carter, the Shenandoah County Sheriff, and today I have a couple of special guests with me. I have the Director of the Department of Social Services, Beth DeLulo, and I have the Child Protective Services uh, uh, Supervisor, Courtney Mather. Guys, welcome to uh, The Source here. We're going to do a little interview today, and we're going to talk a little bit about Child Abuse Prevention Month. So thank you all for being here. Great. Thanks Thanks for having us. Okay, Beth, if you want to tell us a little bit, a little bit about the uh, the month and uh, what's going on, you guys. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. So um, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. Of course, at the Department of Social Services, we feel like every month is um, Child Abuse Prevention Month. But we do have some special events planned for the month of April that we'll get to later um, in the podcast. Just wanted to highlight a couple numbers. Um, that are local numbers. In Shenandoah County in 2021, we received 839 calls involving suspected child abuse and neglect. Um, That seems like a lot. It is a high number. Um, Fortunately, only about 30% of those calls resulted in a a report that met criteria. And I'm going to sort of pass it over to Courtney right. and you to talk about what that means. Right. And uh, I mean, even though 30%, that's still quite a bit. That's still quite a bit it, when it's you look at the, yeah. at the number. Agreed. Yeah. It's higher than we'd like it to be. I always sort of joke with the staff about, like, like, let's put ourselves out of work. Wouldn't we love to get that number down to 0%? Right. Um, and yes, the answer is, of course, we would. Right. Well, as far as reporting suspected child abuse and neglect, Courtney, can you tell me who can report these things? Yes. So... Anybody can report suspected child abuse or neglect, um, but there is one area that, that is super important that I wanted to highlight is that um, that there's certain occupations that are considered uh, mandated reporters, um, which means that they are considered um, to report suspected child abuse or neglect. Um, and, and, for example, some of those mandated reporters are like, of course, our profession, social workers, um, we have law enforcement who also fall in that category, um, teachers, daycare providers, medical professionals, right. um, coaches, right. They anybody who is in the caretaking role would be mm-hmm. considered a mandated reporter. Right. And when they report, what, what, what to report? What do they report? So you, you report everything that you have witnessed or right. sometimes you've even heard. Um, sometimes we receive that secondhand information, but um, most of the time it's, you know, we get calls because somebody has witnessed something or, um, you know, so, so they re- report everything that they have seen um, or heard. Um, and definitely don't ever second guess yourself. Just, just give us a call and we will determine um, if the report meets validity. Right. And are, are you required to give your name when you make a report? I mean, is it, can you be anonymous? I guess is the question. You can be anonymous. Mm-hmm. Yes. We have an intake worker, um, who was trained, um, with our, with the, sta- the code of Virginia and our state policy. Um, and so she, um, asked those questions and at the end, she always asked if you would like to remain anonymous or mm-hmm. not. So we're talking about two different types. So you have the required reporters, people that are required by law to report incidents that they come upon. And then you have a citizen who they think they see something, they can report what, they, what they've what they seen or witnessed. Correct. Okay. Yes. And what is, can you tell us just basically what the criteria for child abuse would be? Yes. So child abuse, it would be any child that's under uh, the age of 18 at the time of the report. Okay. Um, then the alleged abuser has to be in the caretaking role. And the caretaking role is like the coach or the Daycare teacher provider, right, 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 right yes. Right, right. Okay. Um, okay. Anybody who's directly providing care for that child right. or children. Okay. And then um, the alleged abuser neglect has to meet the definition um, defined by the CPS laws and regulation and policy. Okay. All right, and... How do you report? Are there different ways and methods that you report? Yes. So there's a few different ways that you can um, report suspected child abuse or neglect. You can always call our CPS intake line, um, Mm -hmm. and that is our line at 540-459-6362. 
Mm-hmm. You can also call the 24-hour, 24-7 CPS hotline. Um, we have it in Virginia. We have an out-of-state hotline, and then we have a hotline for the hearing impaired. Mm-hmm. And then also you can, we have the VDSS. Uh, we have a portal for mandated reporters. Okay. Reporters. Now VDSS, the Virginia Department of Social Services, right? Yes. Okay. And, um, and I guess your local number, that's not a number that's, that's not a 24-hour l- number. The hotline would be more of a 24-hour weekend thing. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, then tell us what happens after a report is made, Beth. Can you go into that a little bit? Absolutely. So um, like Courtney mentioned, we have an intake worker, and she is highly trained and skilled at determining um, if the report meets criteria. So if the report does not meet criteria for abuse and neglect, in some cases we can reach out to the family and maybe offer them some community resources Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to make the point, though, if, if the report does not meet criteria for abuse or neglect, we do not have the authority to interview the child mm-hmm. or the family or any collaterals. Okay. In some instances, we can offer resources. If the report does meet criteria, then we would assign a CPS worker. Depending on the nature of the complaint, they have between 24 hours and five days to see the child. Okay. Okay. And um, let's see, how long would the uh, Child Protective Services stay involved with the families that you receive these reports for? So when we, when we receive our referrals, um, mm-hmm. they come in as either family assessments or investigations. And okay. for those reports, we're involved between 45 and 60 days. Um, if the family needs additional services after... Um, we assess safety, then that would transition to a a prevention worker and that can kind of stay in place long, I say long term, um, but we, we continue to monitor over time to, in order to close the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not just a phone call and I mean, you actually stay with them for a while and correct. We open up those kind of things. Yep. We open up a case. Um, we open up, it's called an in-home case and, uh, that worker follows the family and, and that's in place for a few months. Okay. All right. Well, I know this month you've got a lot of activities going on, guys. Any anything you want to bring to people's attention as far as the month of April or Absolutely. So you're going to be seeing pinwheel gardens popping up all over our community. Right. Um, We partnered with Response this week to plant some pinwheels um, in Newmarket and Woodstock. Um, Well, you'll see us at the Chamber of Commerce, local law enforcement agencies, and of course our building. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have another event I'll let Courtney talk about. Yes. So that event is going to be our Empowering Families, Nurturing Futures, It Takes a Village event. Um, It's going to be an event that's held at W.O. Riley Park on April 23rd from 12 to 4. That rain date will be April 30th, the same time, 12 to 4. We will have fun activities for the entire family, including a magician, balloon animals, hot dogs, door prizes, face painting, and also resources for parents. Okay. Gosh, got a lot of activities going on this month. We do. Yeah. Well, guys, again, is there, is there anything that I might not have gone over while you're here? I appreciate you coming in and giving us the scoop on what's happening for this particular month. Is anything that I missed that you can think of? Yeah, I think one thing, Sheriff Carter, that I would like to emphasize is um, the staff at the Department of Social Services really do understand that when Child Protective Services is involved with a family, we're not typically seeing the family at their best time. Right. And it can be scary, Mm -hmm. you know, to have CPS knock on their door. And I really want, you know, the community and families to know that we're here to help them. It right. is, it's not our job to judge the families that we're working with and that we serve. Um, our goal is to help them. So I right. just wanted to make that point. Well, I know from just my my time in law enforcement, there's a lot of uh, a lot of family issues, a lot of substance abuse issues, a lot of uh, behavioral health, mental health issues that uh, my agency, your agency, and other agencies get interconnected with and uh, get involved in. And um, we do all we need each other. To, uh, to help some people get through whatever they're dealing with, and especially when you when as we're talking about right now, children and making sure that they're safe and they're taken care of. 
So I appreciate everything you guys do and all your staff. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so you. much. We appreciate you as well. Sure. Well, guys, again, thanks for coming today. We'll put some information up on uh, on contact numbers and things like that for uh, for our listeners. Um, so this is Shenandoah County Sheriff Tim Carter. I want to thank you for joining us here today on The Source. You can find this and all other podcasts on my YouTube channel. That's at Timothy C. Carter. And while you're there, please make sure you click and subscribe to the shows to get new show updates and notifications. And also smash that like button. Again, thanks so much. This is Sheriff Tim Carter at The Source. And have a great day.